Hi everyone, so welcome to the 2048 project for Paradigm Shift. My name is Jesse and I'm just going to give you an overview about the project and to let you guys know what um, you should know before you start the project, such as like logistics, background, abstractions, what each step is intending for you to do, and just go over the starter code a little bit to get you guys a little familiar with everything that's been put together for you. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is just logistics and getting started. So if you haven't set up your workspace, just um, click on the link here and it'll take you to the Cloud9 and the whole process of how to do that, like pull the project. And if you still have questions after that, feel free to ask the TA. So if you guys have done rock, paper, scissors, you might be, you might be pretty familiar with this whole this project based learning where we give you a project and then we walk you through the project and each part of the project applies ideas that you've learned before and concepts that you may have tried and now you're going to put them all together to make a project that's your own so this one specifically is about 2048 I don't know if you guys have played 2048 before but basically it's a game where you can swipe right up left down so all four directions and you try and make one block yield to 2048 Every time you swipe two numbers together, they'll become they become the sum of them. So like two plus two is four, four plus four is eight, etc. So on until you get to twenty forty eight. You can play the game right here to see exactly what it's like. So it might seem really difficult and really confusing to first put together twenty twenty forty eight from scratch, but actually what we've done here is we created a skeleton code for you, and we've abstracted away a lot of things that you don't have to worry about. And the reason why we use abstraction is because that makes it a lot easier to deal with much more complex projects. You break it down into little, little parts, and then you put them all together to make something really a lot bigger and a lot better. So by using abstraction, you'll see like functions such as like get piece or like put piece. Um, and what that does is it basically tells you what it does, but you don't necessarily need to know exactly how it's implemented. Of course, for some of our pro for parts of this project, you're going to implement the abstractions. Like you'll have, you'll have a function called get piece, and you'll have to implement how to like get the piece. But later on, you can just keep using that function instead of having to implement get piece every single time. This is very, a very core concept in computer science because it allows us to break the problem down and make it a lot simpler to deal with, and also makes it a lot more easier for other programmers to reuse some of the abstractions we've made and let them let them like understand the project a lot better without having to deal with every single one of things, those things over again. So this is like some examples of extraction abstractions that might be that represent like simple abstractions that might be f useful later on. So for example, here it says print good message and your message would be whatever. And then you can just print a good message. So the contract is that when you write print good message, you have to write a message that is good because if the programmer uses it and print good message prints out something bad then it, it's confusing right because you expected it to print out a good message so there's a bit of a contract between the abstraction and what's inside the function because these two things have to match up like if you say the function is going to do this then the abstraction is that the function will do this but you don't need to know how it's implemented but if it doesn't accomplish that then essentially the it's it's not working correctly so your code should do exactly what the person expects to do or what you say it should do or else you're missing part of the contract. So the reason why I'm going so in depth into abstraction is because abstraction is going to be very important in this project. We have created something called utilities, which you can look at, um, by the way, when you open your project. And in these utilities, there will be functions that you can use or that are useful when you, um, when you look at your project. So there's clear, pause, make board, and all these things do exactly what you expect them to do. So make board of n would make a board of n. For example, like it, said, it takes in some integer n. Here this, here's how you read the comments. You take in an integer n and the board dimensions, and then it will return an n by n empty board. So if you put in like four, it will return a four by four empty board. And that's exactly what it does. And print board would print the board. So all these things do exactly what they say they would do. And that's really important because later on during your project, you might have to use these functions. You'll be wondering what they do. You can look at the implementation here, but you can also trust that they do exactly what they say they would do. So that's pretty much the intro to the project and the abstraction. Um, 
the basic abstraction ideas. Um, later on, I might refer back to abstraction some more, but if you have any other questions about abstraction, feel free to ask your TAs or post on the Piazza to see if anyone can answer your questions. It's really important to understand abstraction because abstraction is a huge part of this project. And by understanding abstraction, it makes the project a lot more smooth. All right, thank you and see you in the next video.